Hello everyone, welcome to Sh uh, Saturday night. <laughs> An Evening in Paris, Heaven's on Fire. We appreciate everybody coming tonight. I want to kind of make sure that everything's all cranked up here and and uh, we're good to go. Looks like, okay, looks like we are live. So that's good. All right. I trust that, uh, amen, you you're, uh, had a great Thanksgiving. Your holidays were good and... Uh, Amen. I, I trust that the Lord's been good to you and, and blessed your family, kept you safe, and, and we're, we're just so happy. Paul and I had a wonderful Thanksgiving with family and uh, uh, kept us safe on the journey and back, so we're thrilled to be here. Amen. I wanted to say how happy we are uh, to be coming to you on this Tuesday night once again. Amen. Uh, looking forward to a wonderful time tonight. Uh, wanted to say that... Uh, uh, I want to give you our mailing address. There's some things I want to say, some comments before we get into the Word tonight. Amen. We're going to be talking a little bit about Jacob and Esau, but we're going to get over to the book of Amos. And I uh, just want you to know that uh, God has given me a powerful Word that I wanted to share with you uh, tonight. And I, tr I pray that uh, I, I pray that your heart is open in the heaven because the heavens are open. Amen. They are on fire because He is changing everything about us. Before we get into the words of this wonderful song, amen, I wanted to uh, give you our announcements. Uh, coming up, not this coming weekend, but the next, December 11 and 12, we will be with my son and his wife, Darren and Dana Best, at the church with that precious group of people there. With uh, Paul and I will be sharing the pulpit with Russ and Sabrina Carter. We are so excited for what God is doing. It's going to be a real time of visitation, I'm telling you. And if you're in the area, we really would like for you to come and, and join us and come and be with us. Amen. I know there are some precious people out in the Georgia area. We, uh, you're an hour, hour and a half, whatever it is, away, and we hope you can make the drive. Uh, we're going to be bringing some with us from here. So it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great time in God. So we do appreciate each and every one of you, amen, that are joining us tonight. I want to give you our, our mailing address. Write to us at Gary and Paula Gatlin. 901 East Wood Street in Paris, Tennessee, 38242. Amen. We always look forward to getting your cards or your letters, your comments on Facebook, email, however, text, however we get them. Uh, it encourages us, and, and we're so strengthened to know the body of Christ is standing with us. And I wanted to say this, that, uh, uh, that there, are, there are those that have been standing with us financially, and we so appreciate everything you do in obeying the Lord. We, we know that God is doing some things with Paula and I that is just fantastic. We are so excited about the days and the months to come. It's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord. Once again, you can write to us, Gary and Paula Gatlin, 901 East Wood Street, Paris, Tennessee, 38242. Looking forward to hearing from you. Amen. We're going to get into this song here tonight. Uh, the words of the song, Paul, we, with, with the holiday season, everything is so busy that we really haven't uh, taken the time to sit down and, and try to get the melody of this thing uh, where I can, I can learn it. Paula knows it, but I need to learn it as well as the music to it. But the, the words are what are so powerful. Now, as I said before, and you guys that have followed me for any length of time, you know that it's been uh, 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 written by a precious friend of ours that has crossed over to the other side some years ago, Faith Simon. Uh, from Cross Plains, Texas, and God gave her this song, and it is such a powerful, powerful song. I want you to listen to it uh, with the ear of the Spirit, uh, if you will, tonight. It says, Heaven's on fire, destruction, it seems, earthquakes and shakings and broken dreams. But this is the best place I have ever been. There's a new heaven, a new earth, and righteousness therein. So let the fire burn away all the failure in me. And let the shaking establish perfect harmony till only the pureness of Christ shall fill this land until the word made flesh be manifested again. And, you know, the Bible said that the day of the Lord shall try every man's works as by fire. And we're finding out that everything, good, bad, everything about us is being shaken and being tried. And some things that we thought for sure would last forever more and then some we're finding out is not it at all. Amen. But, uh, what, 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 a, what a day we're in. So if, if the Lord is visiting you, and if your things are shaking up, and uh, I don't know why that phone's ringing, but <laughs> anyway, uh, as long, as far as everything, 
amen, that the Lord is doing. Uh, we trust that you are a part of it with us, but we're going to be coming to different places. i got to throw this in real quick before I forget. Amen. That uh, we're going to be going different places. I know the Lord has dealt with us. We're going to be having some meetings in, uh, I, I don't, uh, uh, given the high sign of Paul, I don't know. We thought we had the ringer turned off on that thing, but uh, whatever. We'll figure it out later. Uh, all these electronic devices kind of throw me for a curve anyway. Uh, but anyway, uh, the Lord willing, we're going to be uh, going into uh, uh, Evelyn Perry and the group there within Akron, Ohio. Uh, we, we don't know sometime after the first of the year. Uh, we're looking forward to a, a meeting in Oklahoma sometime, a couple of meetings there actually, and it's going to be a real good time in the Lord. So we're excited. We're excited because it's going to be a great, great time in the Lord. Now, having said that, uh, I, I want you to let me flip over here if I can. I want to read something to you. Uh, out of the book of Amos, uh, uh, let's see here, it's way down here, uh, okay, Amos the 8th chapter, because tonight, the thing that the Lord has, has been putting on my heart, I, 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 uh, it has been opening up so powerful, and it's been exploding in my spirit, uh, I started just a little bit of it uh, the other night. Uh, there in uh, 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 at, at the, the Sunday morning service there, uh, but I didn't get a chance to develop it. I wanted to, to get into it tonight more than anything else. Uh, it says, "Behold, the, and this is Amos the eighth chapter, eleventh verse, and uh, the whole book is great. It's not a long book, but it says, "Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord." And uh, the thing that is interesting right here is this, as you get into this, uh, as you get into some of the ancient Hebrew of some of this stuff, the word hearing here, uh, a famine of hearing, what it actually means is not necessarily, okay, I hear you, or the sound hits my ear, or yeah, I know what you said, or whatever, that, that, that isn't what that means at all. What it actually means is when you begin to take something in and with the full knowledge that action is demanded on your part. In other words, it's not something that, that comes into you. Uh, you hear something, okay, I can do it, I can not do it, I, I like it, I don't like this. The word of the Lord is not up for, for grabs. The word of the Lord and the direction of God is not up for us to debate over. We walk and we follow the Lord whithersoever he goeth. These are they, the Bible said, that, that, that follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Now, let me get over here into this real quick because I wanted to share something with you as he talks about the famine that's coming. The Lord began to quicken this to me, and I want us to hear this. One of the things that we are experiencing right now, and, and I shared as more or less a, uh, the, uh, 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 the, the title or whatever it is you want to call it about tonight's program, was, was you'll remember when Jesus was revealing himself who, uh, to his disciples who he really was. Whom do men say that I am? Now, well, some say you're a prophet. Some say you're a great man. Some say you're this and this and this. Jesus said, well, whom do men say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And they said, uh, you know, thou art, uh, Peter said, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. And then later on, we find that that moves on from there. And he said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part with me. And, and uh, the Bible said, because of that saying, that hard saying, many began to walk away from him. And when he did, he turned to the disciples and said, Will you go away also? I like what Peter said. He said, uh, Where are we going to go? You're the only ones that has the words of eternal life. You're the only one that has something of substance to give us. God began to quicken my spirit in that. And I wanted to pass that along to you tonight, if I could. Amen. Because right now, we are in a famine of hearing a powerful word of life. And I, uh, Paul and I have talked to so many people uh, uh, here in the last little bit and, and we're hearing a common theme everywhere we go is there's no one that has a word of life we, it, we, we, we're, we, I got a great compliment from several people that said, said we, we're so thirsty we've not heard any words of life until we tune in to you and, 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 and while that's encouraging and strengthening it's also a great burden because you see people are starving all over the place now let me qu quickly take you over to the book of Genesis before we go any further uh, everybody here, <coughs> I think, knows the story of uh, 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 Jacob and Esau from their very birth. And uh, I've been blessed to, to get connected with some folks out of the uh, university in, in Israel right now where we're going into the ancient Hebrew 
of those stories or the, the Pentateuch, the, the works of the law under Moses, etc. And it goes back even further. Uh, that, that, then, uh, and and it, it gets into the nuances of the thing and their customs and so forth and so on. It's so powerful. And, and the thing I wanted to give you was this. When it came time, when it came time for the blessing to be passed from Isaac to his two sons, Jacob and Esau. We know, how, we know the story uh, uh, of how that, that Esau sold his birthright. And we're going to get into that. That's my main thrust tonight for, for a bit. But what I want to tell you is this, is that, 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 that when it came time for the change, there had been some things already been working. The thing I want to tell you is this, ladies and gentlemen, here's what the Lord put in my spirit. And I want you to keep this thought in mind as we go through tonight's service. And it goes something like this. God show, spoke to me the greatest thing that humanity or really creation of any kind, it doesn't matter if it's an animal or what it is, the, the greatest thing that, they, that creation faces every day, all the time, is hunger. Everything does. Here's why. Hunger drives everything. Hunger does. Uh, I, you know, I, I've seen people so tired and so weak and so sick they couldn't even... Uh, get up, couldn't even move, couldn't get out of the bed, couldn't get out of the chair. And they get so hungry, they force themselves. What do they do? They get up. Why? Hunger drove them. Uh, and, and if it isn't hunger for food, it's hunger for power, hunger for greed, hunger for this, hunger for that. That there's, uh, uh, there's people that are hungry for their ministry to grow. There's people that are hungry for this and hungry for that. But, but the, I, I'm not talking to all of that tonight because I'm going to tell you something. Amen. If you're not careful, if you're not sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord, what will happen is you will do like Esau and you will sell your birthright because you're hungry. The problem with the world today is that the whole world is hungry. They want words of life, but they are willing uh, uh, to settle for something that's less. They're, they're, people are hungry everywhere, and yet they eat of this and they eat of that. I'm here to tell you something, that there is a priestly order that God is raising up in this hour, and for some reason the Lord has had me on this for the last number of weeks or even months, that, that I have a word of the Lord for those of you that are hungry. How do, how do you know? How do you know that I'm talking to you? Because there is a witness in your spirit deep down inside of you that you will not and cannot ignore that's pulling you and drawing you ever closer. God said that is the Melchizedek order. It doesn't mean you're greater, holier, mightier than anybody else. It means that God has placed his hand upon you before the foundation of the world. We talked about this a few weeks ago, how he has written your book before the foundation of the world. He has done all all of these things and that must be fulfilled. That's why we're going through all the crazy stuff we're going through because they must be fulfilled to bring us to our true destiny in Christ. Now, having said that, let me say this to you. What the Lord is saying in this hour, folks, is this, is that what I am doing is I am causing a people to realize the whole creation is groaning or they're hungry for a manifestation of the sons of God, Paul said, and not just them, but we also waiting for the manifestation, waiting to see something. And we are literally in the middle of the very beginning stage, if you please, of that tremendous change. We're about to walk into something great. Uh, uh, the, and there are those that because of the great cost that's involved, and there are those that don't like it because they don't feel chosen or they don't feel this or they don't feel that. Uh, uh, we bless everybody where they are. The thing I want you to understand is this, amen, that hunger, if you're not careful, will cause you to eat just anything. Uh, other people that are starving to death. And one of the things you'll hear when people are starving to death is this. They'll settle here. They'll settle there. They'll pitch their tent here or there. And when you talk to them, you know what they say? Uh, it's better than nothing. But I'm here to tell you, it is not better than nothing. God says to tell you, amen, that he has something for each and every one of us. The Bible said that Elijah was running for his very life. And he grew weary. And he laid down and went to sleep. Uh, and when he woke up, the angel of the Lord had prepared some meat and, and, and some food for him and he woke him up and he ate and he laid back down again and the angel of the Lord did it twice. The Bible said he went 40 days in the strength of that meat. And I'm here to tell you folks that God says to tell you, amen, you don't have to settle for a lesser order or a lesser word. There are those 
that are, are destined to be in the outer court. God bless them. We bless them. We strengthen them. We lift them. If you need me, I'm here to pray for you in any kind of prayer you want be, to be prayed for. Amen. If, if you need lifted up or anything else, it doesn't matter. We minister to every realm. But I will not pitch my tent in a lesser order. I will not compromise what God has given me. And I will not stay. The Bible said that whenever Elisha and Elijah were on their final leg of their journey, they stopped at several places there. And every place, and you can see it in the scriptures, they stopped in an outer court. They stopped in a holy place. But the most holy place was yet to be. And we find that there's some things that begin to take place. Now that's all type and shadow. But here's what took place. Every single one of them, there was what they called the school of the prophets. And which types and shadows speaks of a lesser order. And what the Lord is saying to this people is this. Every single one of them, they said, the Bible said, they all knew something was coming, which goes right along with the Apostle Paul when he said the whole creation is groaning. They know something is about to happen. Everybody knows something is about to happen. The difference is there are those that have pitched their tent and they say, we're going to sit right here until Jesus comes. We're going to sit right here and we're going to do what we do until. But there are those that said, I can't sit. I can't stay. I must must go on because something is pulling me greater stronger why because I'm hungry for something and I refuse to eat that of a lesser order if you eat of a lesser order you're taking into yourself a substance of a lesser order and it will cause you to be remain in that order I don't know I don't know if this is making any sense to anybody or not I'm telling you what the God is so went off in my spirit the Bible said the Bible said amen that uh, Esau was a man of the field. He, and I like the way the ancient uh, Hebrew there, according to the university in Israel, put it this way. As they, 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 they said when it came time to pass on the blessing, because Isaac had the taste of game in his mouth, he asked, he asked his son Isaac to go fix him some special stew, some special stuff. Why? Because it's time to pass the blessing. It's time to go on. It's time for this change to take place. And because it is time for this to take place, there's a special meal. There's a special anointing. There's a special everything. This is not just a plain old day. It looks like an ordinary day. It looks like every other day. But God's got his hand upon this particular day, ladies and gentlemen. So I want us to hear this. The Bible said that Esau, he went out to go hunting. And the thing that was so interesting was this, that when it came time, and this was pointed out in, in, in some of the script there, it's, it's interesting to know that Isaac, he possessed many cattle and camels and, and all kinds of livestock. Why not prepare me some stew of that? Why not prepare me some of that? Why go to the extremes? Because his hunger for what he wanted sent that son out there. And it opened the door because the, the, the Rebecca began to hear overhear some things. We know the story and how she made this special stew a certain way. And we know the story of how that, I, that, that, that Jacob stole the birthright of Esau. Now, Esau didn't know anything about it because he was out hunting. And I'm going to fast forward here. And the Bible says, amen, that it came time, it came time later on for, the, for this blessing. And the Bible said he saw come in from the field and he was so famine, uh, famished and he was so hungry. And it reminds me so much of us. We're so hungry. All we can think about is right here and right now. I don't know whether there's anybody preaching this word. I don't know whether there's anybody prophesying this word. I don't know where anybody's singing it. I just don't know. Uh, but I'll get a little tidbit and a morsel here. And I'll get a morsel there. And instead of standing still uncompromising and say, if I, like the Apostle Paul, whether I live or whether I die, it's the Lord. If I die, I go to be with the Lord. If I stay here, he's here with me. Either way, I'm with the Lord. So so here we find there are people that they say, I am going to, to preach right here. And, and we, re, we rationalize it and we reason it out in our minds that it's okay for me to pitch my tent on a lesser order. Here goes Elisha and here goes Elijah. And as they're walking along the school of prophets, they say, we know your master is going to be taken from you today. We know the change is on us. We know this change is all about us. 
uh, why don't you stay here with us? And Elisha told him, hold your peace. I know he's going to be taken. I cannot and I will not stay in this lesser order. I cannot do that. Uh, that was at Bethel, type and shadow of an outer court. Then they went to Jericho, type and shadow of Pentecost. There are people that love Pentecost. They love the emotion. They love the shouting, the dancing, the speaking in tongues. And those things are fine and they're wonderful. Uh, as long as you don't let that replace and feel the hunger that you're hungry for. There is an anointing in God that will destroy every yoke and it will cause that hunger to be filled with nothing but himself. Please hear the word of the Lord tonight. I, I pray that I'm making some sense tonight. Amen. Because I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that God has got a priestly order. And yes, we're all hungry, but we refuse to bow down and, and have something lesser. The Bible said, I know I'm jumping around, but please stay with me. The anointing is flowing tonight. And the word of the Lord comes uh, uh, to Esau or to Jacob. And Esau, there they are. He comes in. He's famished. He's hungry. And, and he said, give me some of that stew there. I'm, I'm hungry. And, and, and Jacob, being the deceiver, being what he was, amen. Now, we know God worked everything out after the counsel of his will, and we could get into all kinds of crazy stuff here, but that's not what I want to uh, get diverted with tonight. But the Bible said he told uh, 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 Jacob, sell me your birthright. Give me your birthright, and you can have all the stew you want. And there are those, I want you to hear me, there are those that are settling for lesser revelations, lesser orders. There are those that are in the finished work. There are those in this work and that work. And there are those that are the sons of God. And there are those that are hung up on reconciliation. There are those that, honey, the kingdom message is so, 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 so all over the map. Uh, 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 you know, like I used to tell the people all the time, if you go to a Baptist church or a Pentecostal church, everybody in that church believes exactly the same. But you get into the kingdom message and uh, you can't get two people and a thousand people to agree on anything. Amen. Because we're all experts on everything we think. But I'm here to tell you amen that the kingdom message the kingdom people are being visited because of their hunger. And we're finding out people don't have discernment at all like they have claimed to for years. We find that there are people that that, that they'll eat anything. We find that there are people that, that they feel a little tingle in them. They'll get a little doodad on their arm or they'll forget their hair stand up and they say oh it's got to be God. Not realizing, amen, that there is no anointing, no life in that word. There's only some feel good. There's only something to encourage and puff you up and that make you, you know, we get a little bit of revelation and we think we're smart. The Bible said that knowledge puffeth up. I'm here to tell you something, amen, that God's looking for some priests in this hour that's going to stand still, amen, and we're going to begin to discern the word of the Lord, amen. There are people that refuse to be compromised, amen. There's people, mark it down, there's people going to walk away from you because you won't walk with them anymore. I cannot eat of a lesser order. Oh my God. I, I, I got to stop right here. The Lord just dropped in my spirit. Amen. Everybody here knows the story in the book of Daniel. The Bible said the three Hebrew children and Daniel, they were all in captivity. And as they came there, the Bible says, amen, that, that, that uh, the, 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 the king wanted them all uh, fattened up and, and healthy and, and, and everything. And, and he ended up making them uh, uh, governors over the, prov the various provinces that he had taken captive and, and, and the captain uh, 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 of the slaves came in that, that day and he saw that the, the, the four men were not eating and, and he goes, guys, you're trying to get me killed here. You're trying to get me killed. The kings give me strict orders. You guys get the best food and it's going to be great. You're going to love it. Uh, we're going to fix all the steak and potato. You're going to get really good stuff. And we don't know about the rest of the kingdom, but you're getting some good stuff because the king's got some good, good uh, things in, in store for you. And, and Daniel told him, he said, no. He said, we cannot eat. We cannot eat of that order. I know I'm changing the wording, but I want you to hear me a little bit because this is what was taking place. He said, I cannot eat of that order. I have to stand and hold steady. I'm holding for life itself. I have to hold for what God is about to do. There are people that don't understand. Amen. And please understand, when I, when I say you don't understand, it's not your fault. There are people that their eyes and their ears uh, 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 have a veil over them, and they cannot see the end of the matter. And, and, and if you're one of those, God bless you, I'm not talking to you. It doesn't mean anything one way or the other, other than your time and your order is coming. But the ones I'm talking to tonight are those that you're feeling the witness of this thing, and 
and you're hungry and you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. And, and you feel like you're not being fed where you are. And you feel like that there's nothing that's working out for you right now. I'm here to tell you, stand still. Uh, God is going to show up with a word of life that you have been waiting on. You do not have to compromise. For the Bible declares that the three Hebrew children in Daniel, they said, oh, we want, we're not going to eat the king's meat. We're not going to eat the meat of that lesser order. Oh, the, 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 the religious world out here, they're following everything under the sun. The religious world out of here, they're all about entertainment. They're all about something to make you feel good about yourself. And there's something that about this and the other. And this is not about any of that at all. This is about the Lord Jesus Christ and Him only. This has nothing to do with any of that stuff. And when you wrap your in him and you begin to walk with him you'll find that the things that old song used to sing the things of this earth shall grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace amen I'm here to tell you something that there's something that's beyond Passover there's something that is beyond uh, a Pentecost uh, hear this there's something behind the veil that we've not yet seen now I want you to watch this God oh split the veil and open it up why because there's something even beyond that and he's taken a people to a place we've never been before. Can you hear the word of the Lord? That's why our heavens are on fire. That's why he's changing everything about us. Amen. And how we react and how we think and what we, our relationship, our walk with him. Uh, we don't understand this folks, but I'm here to tell you, amen, that what the Lord is saying is I want to bring you into some powerful, powerful places. And it's time we understand people want to contain God within just a handful of four walls and they want to contain him within a revelation but I'm here to tell you God says I'm higher than all heavens he said that's why I'm burning up your heaven he said the highest you can ever think of me what just let your mind go let it just totally go and be think as high and crazy and wild as you can of the greatness of God he said I'm beyond even that I'm beyond all of that stuff I want you to hear the word of the Lord tonight ladies and gentlemen God says to tell you, amen, that there's a people getting ready to walk into a fullness like never before. i got to drop this in real quick. I, I'm just all over the map tonight. I feel that's why I pray I'm making some sense. But, but, but I want you to hear this. The Lord started me off on this months and months and months ago, amen, about the Garden of Eden and how that there's a cherubim and there, there's a flaming sword, amen, that's guarding the way uh, to the life. Uh, to the tree of life. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, I, I just got to drop this nugget on you real quick. Amen. That's nothing other than a Melchizedek order. Amen. That God has dropped right down in the midst of that garden from the very beginning. And every there's something in us that everything about us, our thoughts, our messages, our songs, our, our music, everything about us is guarding the way of life. And the fact that, that he said, I put a cherubim there, that speaks of imagination. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Everything about your imagination cannot let you come into this thing. Everything, God must wrap himself around you and pull you through the veil into the very presence of, of himself. It's time we understand, folks, God is serious about some things and we're walking into a fullness we've never known before. This isn't about your ego. Amen. If you're hungry for an ego, I'm here to tell you, you've already pitched your tent. If you're worried about your ministry and you're worried about yourself, the Bible said concerning Jesus, he made himself of no reputation, but took upon himself the form of a servant. I'm here to tell you, amen, ministers are all about the ego trip. And they're all about themselves and all they think about is themselves and their ministry and their this and their that and the other. God says to tell you, you've already pitched your tent. If you're worried about whether or not somebody's going to give you a dollar, honey, you've already pitched your tent. If you're worried about anything but walking in the very footsteps of the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, honey, you've already pitched your tent in a lesser order. You have begun to eat something of a lesser order. And when you partake of a lesser order, that becomes part of who you are. There are people that they eat Passover over every day and thank God for it. Thank God for Passover. But I'm here to tell you there's more than Passover. And if all you know is Passover, God bless you. If all you know is Pentecost, if all you know is deliverance, I come through those old ranks of old Pentecost and deliverance and the gifts and I believe in those things. But I'm here to tell you, honey, there's more to it than that. Amen. If you come for a shimmy and a shake and a couple of doodads on your arm, I suggest you go down the road somewhere. I'm not here to appease or tease your flesh. I'm here to lift you up high into the heavens, honey, so that you bask in the glory of God. Amen. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making any sense tonight or not. 
I, I tell you what, there is truly a famine. There's a famine, not of bread nor thirst for water, but for hearing the word of the Lord. That word hearing, literally, I told you, it means you're taking it in knowing it's demanding something of you. It does not mean, it does not mean that you, uh, uh, oh God, okay, I heard it, and I used to hear this all the time, I used to hear this all the time, it used to crack me up every time I'd hear this, I thought it was so funny. You'd go somewhere and preach, and, and invariably, invariably, I'd have somebody come up to me and say, I already heard that, I already heard that, I, not, not from me necessarily, but from somebody else, or somebody else preached something along those lines, or whatever it was, and, and it, it always, <laughs> I always thought it was so funny, because it, it, it's like you look at them and you think, well, you heard that, but obviously you didn't hear it. And, and, and that's the thing that I'm finding so much here is the word of the Lord. When, when you hear a sermon or a message, and, and I, I feel to do this for all ministry. I, I just feel to share this for all ministry. I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal. I, I, don't, I don't care what you are. I don't care. If you give a message out and, or you've heard a message from your minister or whatever it is, I feel to tell you this. That message was not for your entertainment. That message was not given to you uh, so you could just tuck it into your bag and say, okay, another one, another one, got another one under my belt. No, these words are given so that we can take them in and, and they become part of us and they change us from glory to glory. They change us into his image. And I don't care what realm you're in, what church you're in, what order you're in, young, old, I don't care, male, female, it does not matter. Those things don't matter. What matters is that when you sit under an anointed ministry anywhere, the words you hear are not for your entertainment. And, 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 and watch out, they're not even for your agreement. They're here to take it in and let the Spirit of the Lord begin to disseminate that thing throughout your world. Amen. Because we're going to find out real quick, ladies and gentlemen, that God's demanding some things. Now let me get on with this. Amen. Time's getting away from me. Amen. Uh, the Bible says that... that, that, that uh, 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 Esau comes in there and he's famished. He's starving like so many of us. And, and we can't see. I promise we can't see five minutes down the road. We can't understand what is about to take place. All we know is right here, right now. Lord, I'm uncomfortable. Lord, I'm unhappy. Lord, I'm broke. Lord, I'm sick. Lord, my wife's wrong. Lord, my husband's wrong. Lord, my kids. Lord, Lord, you see it. Da, 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 da. We got all these things and we don't realize that whatever we're in right now is merely a temporary situation. The greater things of God is yet to be. There are some things that must be fulfilled in us before we walk any further. Now, here is, here is, uh, uh, here is uh, uh, Esau. He comes in, and we, uh, we could get into his name and what it means. We could get into all kinds of stuff, but I, I don't want to get into that tonight. But I want to tell you this. He comes in there, and he's famished. He's starving to death. And Jacob says, give me your birthright and you can have this, this, this stew. And you know what he says? Why not? What good, what good is my birthright going to do me if I die of hunger? What good is it going to do me? See my situation? My situation is I'm starving right here, right now. What good is it? And that's where some of us are right now. We're thinking, my God, look at the shape I'm in. I've struggled. My kids are on drugs my, my job is shutting down. My money's never enough. My wife this, my, my husband that, my neighbor this. And, and we got a million things that we throw in God's face. And we say, why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not settle for a lesser order? I, and, and I've heard, I, I've heard this. I've heard this so much. You know why? And God help me. I'll probably get some uh, nasty comments about this, but, but so be it. One of the things about this grace message and the finished work message and all this stuff that's so popular these days, I'm not fighting anybody on anything, so I don't care what you preach, all right? Just get that under your belt right now. I could care less what you preach. Amen. But one of the things people like about it, because there's no responsibility about it. It's all about the feel good right here, right now. And, 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 and I've heard people say, especially concerning some of that, I, I, I like that message. You know why? Because I'm so tired of fighting this fight. I'm so tired of the warfare. I'm so tired of the battles. And, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch my tent right here. And they don't understand. They don't understand. That that's not what this is about. But that's that Esau mentality. And please understand, Esau went on, and, and I, I gotta I gotta I gotta jump real quick, time's getting away from me. Esau went on to be a great nation. He did. Matter of fact, we're we're seeing some of their uh, uh, 
stuff go on now in our modern world. And Jacob took that because Esau could not see past right here, right now. Like a lot of us, we're so hungry and we rationalize, well, they are preaching, sounds like kingdom. They are preaching this word. They're not flying. They're not dying. They're not this. They're not that. You know, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? I, 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 they need help too. And I'm here to tell you, there's priests, there's preachers and ministers and pastors of, uh, and evangelists of every order to minister to every order. Don't worry about the Baptists. God's got plenty of Baptist preachers. And don't worry about the Methodists. He's got plenty of Methodist preachers and Catholic priests and, and Pentecostal of every flavor. Uh, all the Pentecostal, Simmons of God, Church of God, Foursquare, you name it. Pentecostal holiness. Preachers a dime a dozen. They're all out there. And they're more, they're wonderful, wonderful people. Don't, don't misunderstand me. They're wonderful people. And they're more than capable of ministering to you if you pitch your tent in their camp. They're more than capable. And if that makes you happy, then God bless you. Your birthright will be given to another. And I'm here to tell you that there are those that said, I, I, I may not understand what's going on. This thing's not about understanding anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, man, if we could understand half this stuff, Lord knows we'd be a lot different shape than we're in now. But that's not what this is about. This is not about, oh, okay, God, I, I, I got it, God. I understand what you're doing. Okay, I'm with you, God. No, 99.999% of the time, I don't have a clue what God's doing. And the other time, other small percentage of the time, I just guess on a good day. Uh, but to see, the thing of it is, I don't have to understand. I just that song says I just need to hold his hand and what the Lord is saying to us is this we're not here to understand why we're so hungry we're here to know that there's something about that meal that that's that that that's at that place that is not for me there's something about this order that's not for me and it doesn't mean it's bad it's just not my order the Bible said in every man his own order and God has an order for this Melchizedek priesthood and he says I preserved you my hand has been upon you and I've kept you and now I want you, I'm giving you a word tonight stand still with no compromise because deliverance is at hand for God says to tell you that that birthright that that anointing that appearing that everything you've been waiting on is now at hand. The creation is groaning and they're waiting on you and me, amen, to take our place of manifestation. What does that mean? That don't mean glow in the dark and walking through walls. Honey, that means that we are a bunch of no-name nobodies that God put his hand on for the foundation of the world. And he said, you're mine and I'm going to use you in a mighty supernatural way and it's going to blow the lid off the entire world. You're going to bless every man, woman, boy, and girl. The Bible said that when David come dancing in uh, to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, bringing in the Ark of the Covenant. He gave bread and wine and meat to every man and woman that was there. He blessed them all no matter where they were, no matter what order they were in. And I'm here to tell you, we don't have to dumb down our message. We don't have to water it down. We don't have to try to sway it or do it this way or that way. Hope you can understand what's going on. Hey Amen. I'm here to tell you, God says you deliver it. I'll be the one that, that will water. I'll be the one that'll plant. I'll be the one to give you increase. I'm going to do this thing. It's not up to you. Because if it were up to me, we would judge and give this one this and this one that. And we'd like this one and we won't like that one. And we want to give more to this one and less to that one. God said, that's not your business. Your business is to bless all creation and set all men free. Hallelujah. Well, I, I hope tonight has blessed you. I hope tonight has made some sense in some crazy way. Uh... Because I tell you what, there's a powerful word. There is a powerful word, amen, that people are selling their birthright. And when I say selling their birthright, they're settling for a lesser order because of hunger. And right now, folks, right now, hunger is throughout the entire world. Right now, the world is starving for a word of life. And like Peter told Jesus, where are we going to go? If you go over here, you're going to get a watered-down version. If you go over here, you're going to get some a warped revelation or you're going to get something that's good and, 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 and please understand something if if I go over here and, and I settle 
for the an outer court or, 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 or a holy place or the second day. I'm eating yesterday's manna. I'm eating some of that other stuff. And, and for those that are in that order, it's fresh manna. But for those that God has anointed for this day, uh, hallelujah, I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that God says that, that I have a fresh word, a powerful word. This is not a time to compromise. There is starvation everywhere. There's no discernment. My prayer for each and every one of you listening to me tonight, God grant us discernment that we know the right from wrong. I, I, and, and I, I want to read one thing to you. I, 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 it's found in Leviticus 10, and I believe it's verse 10. He's looking for a priestly order. We're looking for a priestly order that you may put difference between the holy and the unholy, between the clean and unclean. And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them by the hand of Moses. And the thing that the thing that, that is interesting about that particular thing there in Leviticus 10 is this, and I'm going to try to close with this, is Aaron's two sons had already, matter of fact, that chapter starts off, because God gave them commandment in the beginning in the previous chapters, don't bring strange fire in here. Don't bring a lesser order in here. Don't bring a lesser order in here. And his two sons, the first and the second son, there were three. The first and the second, they brought in, they brought in, the Bible says, strange fire. And God smote them. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, you tell Aaron, don't go into mourning. Don't even, don't even waste your time. Uh -uh. Don't, don't even acknowledge you tell your other sons, bring the body outside the camp. Because that, that's what you did with the cursed body. You would put it outside the camp. He said, you take their bodies and put it outside the camp. They're cursed. And don't you dare mourn over this. And I'm here to tell you, I do not mourn over lesser orders. I love them. I bless them. But right now, my eyes are on the prize. I can only speak for me and, and, and my precious wife, Paula. Our eyes are on the prize. And, 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 and nothing... The, the, there's there's an old say or an old song and I, I'm not even sure who wrote it Gaithers I assume I don't know but it said I've come too far to look back and I'm here to tell you folks that the whole thing that God is raising up in this hour is this do not compromise that which God has put in you don't water it down don't sell your birthright you might be hungry now you might be reaching out now amen and I'm here to tell you amen there are those of you that are connected with Paul and I through this this Facebook Live, I, I understand that. We've talked to some of you, and, and God has connected you to us. And, and, and we are so blessed, so blessed. But we want you to be a part of us. And if we can ever come into your area, amen, and I don't care if it's just to sit down and have a cup of coffee and a, a Bible study, give us a call or, or write to us, whatever, and let us know because God is opening doors. Church is changing as we have known it in, in the last couple of hundred years. Things are changing all over. And Paul and I are here to lift up the body of Christ. We're here to minister words of life. I'm not here to water down. If you want some watered down version, there's plenty of other people to call. If you want to, to stay in a lesser order because it's more comfortable you know, for your flesh and, and, and you don't want your feelings hurt, God bless you. God bless you. Stay where you are. I'm here to tell you, God's about to do something great. Those of you that have an ear to hear, a mature ear to discern what God is saying. And I pray, I pray I've made some sense tonight. Amen. For those of you that are, that are discerning this and understanding, please know this. Amen. Whatever situation, whatever starvation, whatever hunger you're dealing with now, amen, stand still a little longer because deliverance is on the way. Words of life are coming to the body of Christ. He has not brought you this far to let you die in the wilderness. He's not going to do it. We're going to walk into the fullness of this thing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to tell you, those that have an ear to hear, we're walking into the fullness. It's not happening as quick as we'd like, trust me. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, we're going to walk into the fullness of what God's doing. Amen. I trust tonight's made some sense. I want to invite you real quick. Uh, don't forget about a meeting coming up in Mooresboro, North Carolina, at the church with Darren and Dana Best and a precious bunch of people there. We're going to be there in a powerful move of God. We're going to share the pulpit with Russ and Sabrina Carter. We are so thrilled. Amen, to, to see them, amen, just walking into the fullness of what the anointing God's placed on them. Amen, we're excited about that. Uh, that's December 11 and 12, Saturday night, Sunday morning, so come and be a part of us, and if you're, you're within driving distance, whatever, just come on in. We're going to have a great time in God. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Amen, God's going to meet us there with words of life. 
Amen. Also, I want to invite you to write to us, uh, Gary and Paula Gatlin, 901 East Wood Street. That's in Paris, Tennessee, 38242. We always look forward to hearing from you, whether it be by text, comment on Facebook, letter, however you send it. We, we just love hearing from you guys. We're part of that same body. We're bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And all I can say is what a time it is to be alive in God. Amen. What a beautiful time this is. Amen. So, amen. Until next Tuesday, uh, another evening in Paris with heavens on fire. And I can truly tell you, boy, my heavens are on fire. I, and if you get close enough, maybe I can catch you on fire. Oh, hallelujah. As Paul and I wish you, God bless you, and good night. And we will uh, be back, Lord willing, next Tuesday night. God bless you.